Well, corruption in Ukraine is a topic that is highly controversial and is now gaining steam in recent weeks. In the latest, powerful businessman Igor Kolymyoske is the latest domino to fall in a fraud and money laundering case in Ukraine. While this is not the first time that a case of corruption has surfaced. Misuse of funds have garnered firm response from the Ukrainian administration in the last few weeks. And to talk more on this, we have with us Lieutenant Colonel Glenn Grant, who is a former advisor to the Defense Minister of Ukraine and fellow at the Baltic Security Foundation. Thank you so much for joining us and beyond. And Lieutenant Colonel Glenn Grant is joining us live from Latvia. Thank you. Right. Now, Colonel, Ukraine is at a war with Russia. We've been reporting that for the past few months. Their resources, manpower, everything at stake here. And then there are reports like these which surface. This is also not the first time that corruption cases have surfaced in Ukraine. Talk to us as to why is corruption so systemic in Ukraine? Well, it, it's, a, it's, it's a sort of fo former Soviet Union thing. So when Ukraine came away from Russia, they had just the same amount of corruption and style of leadership where power, you get power to make money. Um, whereas in, in the West, you, you get money so that you can go into politics. So it's like the reverse way around. Mm. And, and the, the interesting thing with Kolomoisky is that Kolomoisky was, um, uh, was, was Zelensky's backer. And they've known each other a long time. And Zelensky has effectively been protecting him um, from his corrupt ways. But in 2020, the Americans actually uh, sanctioned Kolomoisky. So there is great suspicion now that this is um, this is a, la a large amount of American pressure to actually to put you know to get Kolomoisky uh, under control because he's been doing a lot of money laundering. Um, but the interesting thing is that uh, it was the security services which are under control of the president's administration that arrested him, not the anti-corruption bureau, which is independent. And this tells most people that that you know that the president wants to keep this under control and that possibly there's much more uh, publicity and activity around this than will actually come out in the long run so we've yet to see that you mentioned the other uh, corruption all the corruption things that have been going on and again this is separate this from kolomoisky uh, because that what we're seeing is a lot of election uh, activity by zelensky and his president's team so a lot of the corruption things that are going on are, are relatively low level um, uh, people being arrested, whereas there are other people that are more senior and, and have been involved in corruption, uh, like the current defense minister, who are, who are pretty much being left alone. I mean, it's rumored that he's going to be moved. Uh, the, 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 but, but if he is moved, the, he'll be sent away as an ambassador somewhere. So this is not only about uh, not only about elections coming up, but it's also about control of the money flows. And you have to remember, this is a kleptocracy. Ukraine is a kleptocracy and has been so since 1991. So who controls the money flows is really, really significant and important. So you have to take a lot of the anti-corruption things, I'm sorry, but with a pinch of salt and a touch of cynicism. Right, Colonel, like you mentioned, there is lots happening on the anti-corruption front in Ukraine. There is a mood in the country that the government is combating corruption. Uh, what exactly is happening on ground? Well, one, one thing is that the, um, the regional military uh, offices, um, which do the recruitment, uh, they are, first of all, they, they are being checked by, again by the security services, not by the anti-corruption bureau. And a lot of the, the bosses there, the colonels, have been sacked because what they've been doing is handing out certificates uh, to people so that they don't have to join the army and go to the front line. And it's rumored that as many as a million, uh, a million Ukrainian uh, men have been given certificates. Now, allied to this, of course, is the medical system, um, who also have been handing out certificates. And now... Uh, now the uh, security services are now actually going to check all the, the medical certificates that have been given in the last uh, 18 months, which is going to be a huge task. And, 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 and that, is a, that is another thing. And then generally, um, generally the, 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 the sort of anti-corruption pressure on people like, like the police uh, and the border guard is, is increasing. But this is a very, very complex area. 
uh, and it's going to take more than more than probably more than this government and this system to actually to break corruption in the lower levels. Um, so I think we've got a lot more of this to come in the future. Right, Colonel. Can you also sh shed some light on some domestic results of the anti-corruption efforts in Ukraine? Well, the, 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 going back to what I said, I mean, domestic results, the first thing is is the sacking of a lot of the colonels. Right. Um, and some of these people have, some of these people have made millions, uh, I mean, millions of dollars by actually by issuing these these certificates to, to people to cross the border. Exactly the same at the border. Some of the border guard have been issuing certificates and letting people go through for five thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars. And and the, the 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 security services are now catching these people, uh, and actually um, you know putting them inside. Um, but, but as I said, cynically, right. some of this is control and some of this is publicity. Right. Also, uh, Colonel Grant, do you think it is right to say that Ukraine's oligarch are a dying breed and that they corrupted the Ukrainian state? Also, do you think that Ukraine needs de-oligarchization? Ah, that's a very good, a very good question. Um, th th there's certainly the, the oligarchs have gone very quiet. I mean, Kolomoisky has been trying to keep his head down since the Americans have sanctioned him. Uh, Akhmatov, who's the richest man in um, in Ukraine, uh, he has been on one side uh, uh, working. It seems quite hard to actually to support the defense forces, but on the other side, he's been using his businesses to ac accumulate even more money. Um, that a lot of the other oligarchs have gone quiet and, and they, they've put their head down below the parapet. But of course, they, they, you know, I think they're hoping that the war will finish and then they can come back out. I don't think that society will allow this to happen. I mean, de-oligarchation <laughs> is something that the society wants. It wants no more oligarchs. Um, so I think that, you know, there's a lot more steps on this to come um, from society actually putting pressure on the government to change things and to actually to change the laws so that oligarchs can't uh, buy up all the things that, 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 that they've done in the past. Right, Colonel, reports also suggest that fighting corruption has become extremely crucial to Ukraine's efforts to build an alliance with Europe as it seeks EU membership in times to come. Oh, that's absolutely right. And I mean, there's a huge amount of pressure from the EU uh, and the US to actually to, 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 to fight corruption and, and and I'm sure that, 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 that the, the, the money that they're offering and the support that they're offering is becoming conditional upon the government actually fighting corruption. And they've been very slow in the past. I mean, the U European Union has said, we want you to fight corruption, and very little has happened. Um, but, but, but it is now starting to happen. Um, OK, small levels still, but, but, but it's much more than it's been before, and it's much more public than it's been before. So I think that... that the government has actually understood that, that money will reduce and that support will reduce unless they actually take uh, corruption seriously as a, 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 a it's a war loser. I mean, it's money that, that should be spent on the front line and the public know this and the public is extremely cross about corrupt things going on when they're when they're raising money to save their own you know, brothers and, and husbands. Um, so th there will be change. Right, Colonel, we'll of course have to wait and see how the corruption scandal pans out in Ukraine. But thank you very much for joining us on Rion and Sharing Insights on this developing story. Thank you. Thank you.